Rock and Roll Trucker. This is the Rock and Roll Trucker. We're knocking out miles, we're eating good, we're rocking and rolling and having a good time. Come along for a ride. Let's see where we can go today. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, January 31st. I can't believe that we're in the year 2024 already, and I can't believe that we're on the last day of the first month already. The older I get, the faster time is flying by and along and great. Here we are. I didn't really record anything yesterday. We just took the day off from that. It was a very hectic day. Things were thrown off and out of whack on account of things being thrown off and out of whack on Monday. And that has followed me all the way into today. I'm on my way to Rutherford, to North Carolina with a load. I'm just getting through Knoxville, passing the 398 over here, uh, exit 398 on 75, truckers will know that exit, there's there's truck stops there and everything, pilot fuel, fuel stop for a lot of people, uh, I really should have already been well past Knoxville last night, and by this time this morning, should have already been where I'm going, but the chain reaction from the long weights at my receiver and shipper on Monday has just daisy chained over into today. But we're all the way rolling. But problems followed me into this morning. I got up and I stayed at the Walmart in Dalton, Georgia last night. Real close to home. Close enough to be annoying, but Aaron came over, rode over and had dinner with me and everything. It was really close to home, but it was going to I was going to have to just take my exact 10 hour break and get up and go. There wasn't a lot of screwing around time. It was going to burn too much of a break up to go home and then come back the next morning and all. So she rode over. We had some dinner. Did some kicking around Walmart and stuff that I needed to do. And uh, So we did that. We got up this morning at 10 minutes till 4 to get myself going and up and out and moving with my pre-trip started by 4.15. Success, got that going. Got up, I was out of that Walmart parking lot by 4.30, by right around that area, and uh, made a beeline over to uh, Calhoun, Tennessee to pick up what I needed to pick up. We got there, went to check in, and this load was supposed to be preloaded. It was supposed to be a driving hook, supposed to be sitting on a trailer. It was supposed to have been done like two days ago. Well, I get in there, check all in, and they're like, well, there's this is not loaded, and uh, we don't have anybody that can even mess with it coming in until about 7. So this is around 5.30. Mind you, I work for a smaller company. They don't have nighttime dispatch and stuff. If you want to talk to somebody at that, you know, time, you really kind of got to wake somebody up out of the bed. Like, it's a, my company is a, they're an agent for a really big company, but I deal with the people within my agency, BWI. Well, they, I was like, all right, I got really irritated about it and everything, and uh, I went out, and I was like, well, I'll shoot a text message. I'm just, I'm not. It's, but I have to sit for an hour and a half. That will irritate me, but somebody will be available by then. And I just, I'm not real comfortable. I don't like calling and waking people up out of the bed or anything like that. So it's like, I'll shoot a text just on the chance that maybe they're up and going, you know, or about to be, and uh, they'll give me a call back. And about 20 minutes later, less than 30 minutes later, I did get a call back. And it turns out that the other dis the other person in dispatch had sent me the wrong trip with the wrong load number. The one that they had sent me was not loaded yet, but they had two others sitting on the yard, preloaded, going to the same place with the same product, but they just wouldn't give them to me until I had a different number. So they got me a new number and gave me the actual trailer number and everything. And we eventually got that ironed out. But troubles and delays have followed me all week. Luckily, 
they did take care of it for me rather quickly this morning. I know everybody's going to go, oh, you shouldn't worry about waking them up. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand and all, but I just, I personally, it's not a comfort. I don't feel good about calling somebody, you know, waking up out of the bed and stuff. You know, if it was, if it was a way bigger deal or like a severe issue with a breakdown or it was going to be eight hours or something before anybody was coming in to help resolve this, yeah, I'd have done it. But worst case scenario, I'd have to sit there for, you know, an hour and a half or so, but which is not does not make me happy. The whole thing had me hot under the collar until it got resolved. I was not pleased and a lot of not pleasant things were coming out of my mouth at the parking lot, but it did get resolved. I didn't have to wake anybody up. And uh, We are rolling now. I would have liked to have been getting there right about now to have this unloaded, you know, because I do want to make some more money for the rest of the week, but now a good chunk of my day is going to be eaten up from driving to Rutherfordton to get this delivered, having to do the full trip. So that affects what I can do for the rest of today as well, which does roll into effect tomorrow and effect Friday when I like to go home. So it's been a been kind of a patience testing week, but we're rolling. We're up. We're at it. We're talking. We're filming. I'm telling you about how my week's going. I don't know how many people really care, but I'm doing it anyway. So I, I, I still, from day to day, more and more lately, have been questioning why exactly do I do this channel? You know, I just kind of for fun, kind of for venting. You know, I've covered all that ground before, kind of to leave a little something for one of these years. If I'm gone, you know, my kids can look back and be like, there's dad, there's what he was up to. You know, kind of a, a little more than a photo album, you know, kind of get things a little bit of a visual of what I was doing, you know, and narration of what my life was going on in my life at this time, so people get to, you know, get to look back at that and all, but, and also just wanted to kind of put my viewpoint of what's going on, and, you know, with my version of my days of what's going on, you know, in my segment of trucking out here, give people kind of an insight on that, but there's also dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other way more prominent than my trucking channels out there doing the same time doing the same thing and they all have quite a substantial bit more traction on here than I do and uh, just not building up a load of momentum and a lot of steam on this channel like I would like I got a pretty good bit of subscribers all things considered but my viewership is not up my hours watched is not up where it need to be it's just Getting things built up, getting to the monetization point is just gruelingly slow, and it just, it's very disheartening on some days. You know, so, yeah, I mean, it's some of the, I haven't been putting out content quite as regularly as I had been before, just because it's been, I just kind of needed to breathe on it a little bit and keep myself motivated and keep on doing it, because at this point, I, it, it's, a, I'm kind of mostly more or less doing it for myself it seems because it's just you know i got a couple of people who get in there and watch and comment stuff like that but not much every now and again youtube will throw me a bone on the algorithm and it'll let one video take off and then it'll go back to just trickling in at the snail's pace and so that's a little discouraging sometimes i pick my spirits up and get like or comment subscribe share something if you feel like it if not cool. I understand. I know I'm not the most exciting human being in the world on here. Just showing things from from my view. But, yeah. Encourage me. Say, keep on doing it. Or say, hang it up now. We're tired of watching it. Either one. Just give me some input. I'm going to go for now. Do some driving. I'm going to stop and fuel up here in a few minutes. I'm going to drop off into the high Gorge area there and get off into North Carolina. And, uh, this clip has gone on long enough. Next time I talk to you here in a little while, we'll be from the great state of North Carolina. See y'all there. Howdy, 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 folks. Welcome back. Or thanks for welcoming me back. I don't know. We're in Taylorsville, North Carolina. We made it to Rutherfordton this morning. 
we got there got immediately stuck in the door and it's a nice easy load with big big rolls of I don't even know what you call that stuff some kind of I don't know some kind of padding or tissue or something like that I'm not really sure what it is but it comes off really quick really easy they unloaded me an absolute blazing record time like they they unloaded me quicker than a dispatch they even had time to dig me up another load but even then they did that quickly for me and uh they gave me a couple of choices and the one i opted to go to even though i don't like where this one's delivering to i've been there before when i was a company driver with west side uh west side transport um, it's gonna line me up good for another easy load that will get me back home Friday. And the place that the, the one after this picks up and delivers, I like both of them, especially the place where it picks up. Super easy, nice people, very quick, very efficient. And if I need parking, they've got parking. Load is light, goes to an easy place. Easy living, we just gotta get this one off. But. Yeah, uh, it's been quite a few hours in between uh, getting on the camera here. Uh, I've had an interesting development with the truck. It's running fine, but uh, my tachometer has started acting up. It's wanting to read like 600 RPMs above what it actually is on the uh, on the analog tach. The I can swap it over to the digital one on the dash, and it's fine. But even turning the truck off, when I turn it off, the tachometer stays at, it, it stops at 600. So when I start it up, it's it, like before I even turn the key, it's already reading 600. So it's at my normal cruising speed or whatever. It's like reading way up there. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, that is a new one on me. It's a, I think that's a operated digitally there. I think that one can probably be just reflashed or something, but I don't have the time or the money to go get the computer hooked up just to mess with the tachometer. So hopefully, maybe, 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 maybe it'll just kind of, maybe after cycling through the key a few times, it'll rework itself. I don't know. You can't tell with anything remotely close to being a modern truck. This one's a few years old now, but it's still falls under the banner of modern truck and uh, they have minds of their own especially with the electronics especially on these pack arm products so we'll find out i don't know that's a new one nothing major doesn't really affect anything it's just annoying it's just annoying looking down and making it think that i'm like over making me think that i'm overspinning the engine when i'm gearing down and stuff but eh, it is what it is we'll deal with it i'm gonna drive i got I've uh, only got two and a half hours to go. I'll probably run two two hours of that out and then start I use that last 30, 30 to 40 minutes or so to start feeling out, scratching around for where I'm going to uh, pull over for the night. And uh, after that, get, a, get her sleep on and get up and go get this load to where it's going. We don't have a whole lot of spare time for the morning, but we do have a little bit. So Not the biggest rush I've ever been in. Somewhat of a rush, but not major. So, but we're all mapped out for the next, all the way through Friday. So, good deal there. I'm going to go. You guys be good. I'll catch back up with you here in a little while. Howdy, y'all. We are in South Carolina in the sleeper. We're done for the day. We've been done for the day for a little while. Didn't record a lot today. I just tried to get stuff done. Uh, we're somewhere, we're in Gaffney, South Carolina, I think. We had a pilot, we got parked, got a shower in, got some dinner in. We went across the street to uh, some little spot called Clock Restaurant. Not bad, kind of diner-like, good like diner slash old school cafeteria type food. I had a, had a bacon chili burger and fries and some good soda and, uh, and I went and got my shower. Now I've just been setting up watching the TV, streaming some entertainment there, watching Reacher and chatting it up with Aaron. Uh, we uh, pretty much ran our hours out today. So we, let's see, we went from, we 
went from Dalton, Georgia to Calhoun, Tennessee to load. Had troubles there. Bailed out from Calhoun, went straight to Rutherford, to North Carolina. Got there in really, really good time. Got unloaded quicker than I've ever been unloaded just about anywhere ever. And uh, then we went from there to Taylorsville, North Carolina to load. That took a little bit longer, but not horrible. And then we went about as far as we could uh, to the just to a point where we'd still be able to have a parking space. I had like 45 minutes left on the clock, but my parking options were, it was getting to that time of the evening where parking options were gonna get few and far between. So we just took what we had available to us and it worked out. We had a place to eat and shower. We got a QT next door. That's where I'm gonna go in the morning to get myself, get my coffee and everything and snack for the road and all. We've got to get to uh, Lithia Springs, Georgia. And it's probably gonna time out just where I'm gonna hit Atlanta traffic in the morning. Not crazy about that, because that's gonna put me real tight on getting where I gotta be by my eight o'clock appointment, eight o'clock appointment. And I've been to this place before uh, when I, with the company I was driving for before I bought this truck and started doing my owner operator thing. And I don't love the place. They're gonna, it's gonna have to go through the rigmarole of getting a lumper and all that mess. Uh, industry's a joke and a small tight place ton of trucks in there ton of trucks and not a ton of space and uh and then we're gonna go from there and go to one of my favorite pickups in Buford Georgia good place light load good people loading quick and then we're taking that to Morrison Tennessee for Friday not quite as quick on that end not bad it's easy easy to get to easy in and out lots of room hmm. and we'll leave there and we'll go home yeah we uh just kept our nose to the grindstone today listen to a lot of podcasts listen to a little bit of music and that's my recommendation for right now there is a new layer of the minotaur single out on the new releases this week most people probably haven't heard of that band. Some people will have heard it. Most people probably have not. They're very heavy. Like, I don't even know what kind of heavy to describe them. It's not like death metal heavy. Very, They got harsh, very heavy vocals, but you can understand them. It's like, doom metal, but like, way I don't I really don't know how to describe it very sounds like a herd of elephants marching down the street you know is what it sounds like it sounds like a bunch of sounds like a herd of war elephants just very rhythmic and just chuggy and just just heavy you listen to it and it feels like it has weight it feels like it weighs a thousand pounds when you're listening to it yeah I think the song is called Dark Sorcery Beyond. It's been a while since they've had anything new as far as I know. And uh, I highly recommend it. Like I said, the band name is Lair of the Minotaur. L-A-I-R, Lair of the Minotaur. Dark Sorcery Beyond. Look that up. If you like your stuff heavy, if you like it plodding and weighty and just, nah, it's good stuff good stuff. It'll make you get that stank face on and just, oh yeah. Sorry, I keep, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm moving the camera around. I'm all excited stuff. But yeah, where we're at, not a lot of info or anything on this video today. I've been trying to keep these a little bit shorter. I think I was, a lot of times I think I was losing people's attention with the, you know, I was getting up in the 28, 29, 30, up to 35 minute long video sometimes. And I think it's too long. Start cutting it back a little bit here, keeping them a little more brief. Yeah. See if that gets people's attention held any better. We'll try it. I don't know. You let me know. But I am going to go because it's about time for bed already. I'm going to get up at like 3.15 in the morning. Ah, oh, it's gross. It's gross. Yeah. Whatever time it is, wherever you're at, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Spread positive light and energy wherever you can, anytime you've got the opportunity to do so. Everybody needs it. I need it. We all need it. That's it.
Let me go. I'll catch y'all on the next one. See you pretty soon. Y'all have a good one.